This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. This is Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. Or if you just want to find everything all in one spot, winningcureseverything.com is the place to go. Go check out the website. You can subscribe to the podcast there or your favorite podcast app. Just search for Winning Cures Everything. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, share out the show, tell everybody you know about it. We want to get as many people in here as possible. Every day, 10 to 15 minutes of pure sports, and I guess sports business, entertainment, along with picks every day. Uh, Today is Tuesday, February the 19th. We, of course, have college basketball picks coming up. Again, two and three last night. I've been on a slide. It has not been good. We're getting back off of it this evening, though. So, here is the rundown for today's show. AAF. Is it possible that they were actually going to fold after just one week? I don't think so. Um, But they did get a $250 million investment, and we're going to talk about that. Tyson Fury, heavyweight boxer, signed a contract with ESPN. We're going to talk about what that means. And then, of course, at the end of the show, college basketball picks. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books You can find more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. Let's jump into it. AAF, Alliance of American Football. The initial report from The Athletic said that they needed $250 million from an investor in order to make payroll. That they could not pay players after the first week because they didn't have any more capital and they needed somebody to come in and save the company. I don't buy that for a second. Charlie Ebersole has come out afterwards and said, look, the investment by NHL's Carolina Hurricanes owner Tom Dundon was obviously any startup needs more capital, right? There's step A, step B, step C, step D for raising money. The initial money was already there. The salary cap for our salary pool for the AAF, is only like $28 million. So this $250 million investment was not to save the league so that they could pay the players. They explained to everybody that we had a a glitch. We switched over payroll companies. We switched over payroll systems. And no, players did, or some of the players did not get paid last Friday, but they did get paid today. On Tuesday, they were told of this beforehand. It is what it is. It's a brand new company. They fired it up very quickly. I mean, these teams only had like a month of practice before they were actually playing games. Now, while I think, hey, you might could have done that a little bit better, and obviously with the payroll stuff, yes, obviously you could do that a lot better. But I don't believe for a second that the league was going to fold one week in when they have television contracts for the entire season. I mean, remember, they work with NFL Network, CBS Sports, TNT, uh, Bleacher Report, all, all of this that Turner has has put in te- uh, television money. They are set up for that. The $250 million will definitely help. And it sets up Tom Dundon on the uh, the board of directors for the AAF. He will be the chairman of that. I think this works out well. But the initial report that it saved the league, I think, was a bit premature. And I don't think that it was set up very well by the, by the writer. I'll say that. Uh, there were no real sources in it. The only sources he had were agents that claimed that, no, they did not get paid on Friday like they were supposed to, but they were told they would be getting paid next Tuesday. It's not like Tom Dundon just walked in and gave them $250 million in cash today. So they put it in the bank and then they sent out their payroll. Like, this stuff takes time. So obviously that money was already there. It was already set up for the players. They're not making a killing. 
we're not talking about having to pay each player a million dollars. Like these guys are making seventy five to eighty thousand dollars for a season. The the premise behind this was absolutely ridiculous. It was poorly reported, and I think everybody involved should have done a better job. Cheers to Charlie Ebersold and that bunch for getting the investment, for hopping on this. I think it's going to make it a better product. Uh, the AF has been fun so far. Chris and I are going to record this evening. We're going to talk about our reactions to week two of that, what we think of the league as a whole so far, uh, and we'll get into that more later on. Let's move on to the next topic. Tyson Fury signed a contract with ESPN and Top Rank Boxing. Uh, it was five fights for $103 million. That is some pretty hefty stuff, I got to tell you. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, uh, he is one of the biggest fighters in the world, one of the biggest boxers in the world. He signed with DAZN for five years, $365 million. Fury was never going to make that. Uh, but Fury did more than quadruple his net worth in one contract. That's all it took. Now, a lot of heavyweight boxing fans are a little disappointed in this because it could feasibly make the Wilder Fury rematch a little more difficult. It could make a Joshua Fury fight difficult to do because all three boxers, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and Tyson Fury, are all three on different networks. They've all got contracts tied to different places. Right? Wilder has got... Uh, basically Fox and Showtime. And then Wild, or, uh, Wilder's got Fox and Showtime. Fury has got ESPN. And Joshua's got the UK stuff. And I believe HBO, if I'm not mistaken, over here. Um, but I could be wrong about that. Although I have watched him fight on Showtime. I'm not sure how that whole, how that whole thing works. Either way, uh, Fury will have a minimum of two fights per year on ESPN Plus in the United States. That's going to be kind of hard for him to fit in a Deontay Wilder fight on pay-per-view. And that's what it's going to take. Because Wilder's not going to go fight on ESPN because he's got the Showtime deal. I, I don't know how this stuff works. If there was a boxing league, you know, you've got all these different belts. And I've complained on this show beforehand about this, but... A WBC belt, a WBO belt, a IBO belt. I mean, all this different stuff that nobody understands which belt means what. You got three different guys claiming to be the heavyweight champion of the world, and they've all got belts. You know, you can't figure out what is what. Now, good on Fury for signing the contract because he is he's exactly right about this. He said that, that this is something that will make him the premier heavyweight fighter. ESPN's got more subscribers than any of the uh, of the other major networks that are that are currently showing boxing. So if Fury is on ESPN five times over the next two and a half years, yeah, he's going to be a better known name. Uh, I'm a little surprised at ESPN for giving him the money. But if you've got one guy that you can pay this and you, you feel like he's going to be a good draw, and he will be, uh, I don't know how well of a draw he will be going up against some of the names that he will probably have to go up against. Like I, I will say this, Manny Pacquiao, it didn't matter who he was fighting. If he was on ESPN, everybody watched. The numbers were really good. And I think once that experiment worked out well, ESPN felt more comfortable with giving Tyson Fury more money because – He's in his prime, he's undefeated, he's a big name, he's somebody that will continue to grow. And it's a it's a humanitarian story that you can get behind, right? He had mental problems, he had addiction problems, all this. He had to fight from uh, being overweight to come back down, He and he's still winning. And then, of course, the where he gets knocked down by Deontay Wilder and then gets back up, and nobody gets back up against Wilder, yeah, it was a draw. He didn't win the fight. But that's still something you can sell. Because when he got up, I mean, it, it was the craziest looking thing you've ever seen. It almost looked staged. Like, you know it wasn't staged, but good gracious. Either way, I'm curious to see what this is going to do for boxing going forward. Tyson Fury, congrats to you. 
on signing a fantastic deal, one hundred three dollars for five or one hundred three million dollars for uh, five fights. That's that's big time money. All right, let's jump into the college basketball picks. Went two and three last night, two and four on Sunday, five and three on Saturday. Here's what we got for this evening. We got uh, four sides and one total. Let's do it. Virginia Commonwealth minus seven against Rhode Island. That is rotation number 628. We got 640 rotation number. Quinnipiac plus two against Iona. Everybody and their mother is on Iona tonight. Uh, Quinnipiac, I understand. Sunday afternoon, they went three overtimes with Siena. I get that. But Quinnipiac at home, plus two. Numbers show that they should win this game by like four. I'm going to take them plus the two. Uh, Nebraska plus four at Penn State. I bought half a point on that. It was three and a half. It's been sitting at three and a half all day. Everybody seems to love Penn State. Uh, I think Penn State will be coming back down to earth. Nebraska has been playing much better the last two ball games. They're finally figuring out how to play without the guy that they lost. Um, next up, Buffalo minus seventeen and a half. It's rotation number six fourteen. Nebraska rotation number, by the way, six oh five. Buffalo, 614, minus 17 and a half. I bought one and a half points on this one. It had gotten up to 19. Uh, they are at home against Ohio. Buffalo covers these big numbers. And Ohio is dreadful against the spread. I think they're like 6 and 17 this year. I mean, it's really, really bad. They do not cover as a road dog. They are 1 and I want to say 7 as a road dog this year. Uh, so I'm taking Buffalo minus 17 and a half. And then finally, 624 rotation number going under 142.5 on Bradley versus Drake. Uh, these two played early in the year. The over-under in that one was 137. They went under it by like 10 points. I think same thing here. This one is up to 142.5. I'm going to go under the 142.5 again. As always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks. Or just go to winningcureseverything.com, click in the navigation bar, and it'll have gambling picks right there. We do this every day, 10 to 15 minutes. It's a lot of fun. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. Uh, like us on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter, at Winning Cures. You can hit me up, at Gary WCE. Subscribe on YouTube. Leave some comments. Leave reviews on the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast. Get those picks in. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.